was that their letters were being intercepted by Walsingham spies, and one of these was John Florio. everyone welcome back to John Florio channel I am Mary and I'm here to talk about John Florio if you have watched other videos that I made on John Florio you are probably acquainted with the fact that he had a double personality he was officially known as a trustworthy tutor meticulous lexicographer and talented teacher but he had a double life he also worked as a notary a mystery agent and spy when he worked at the french embassy john florio had the role to bring the letters that the french ambassador castel knew wrote to the english aristocracy in this way florio was able to get to know people like Walter Raleigh, Philip Sidney, and London's greatest spy master, Francis Walsingham. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe if you are new, to like this video. I almost forgot. There is a Shakespeare's play that makes a detailed reference to the story that I'm going to tell right now, but I will reveal you which play it is. Please write in the comments the solution, and if you don't have it, I'll write it in the info box. And now, let's start. Who was Francis Walsingham? Francis Walsingham was the principal secretary to Queen Elizabeth I, and he employed John Florio for one of the most intriguing spy story of early modern era, the Babington Plot. In 1585, the English situation was precarious. The cessation of anti elizabethan plots had shown immense dissension among English people. It had become quite obvious to the Protestant Queen that a Catholic revival was gaining momentum in her country. For this reason, Francis Walsingham helped create the Bond of Association, the signatories of which promised to hunt down and kill anyone who conspired against Elizabeth. For these reasons, the following month, the Catholic Mary, Queen of Scots, was placed in the strict custody of a friend of Walsingham. At Christmas, she was moved to a manor house at Chartley. During the captivity of Mary, several attempts were made to place her on the English throne. The most significant of these was planned by Anthony Babington, but who was this man? When he was a child, Babington was employed as a page boy in the Earl of Shrewsbury household. The Earl was at this time the jailer of Mary, Queen of Scots, and it is likely that it was during this time that Babington became a supporter of Mary's cause to ascend the throne of England. At 20 years old, Babington was reportedly considering leaving England permanently and was trying to secure a passport. For this reason, he obtained introduction to Robert Pauley, a man with good political contacts with a view to securing him a license to go to France. What Babington didn't know was that Pauley was an agent for Francis Walsingham. Pauley probably intentionally failed to obtain a passport for Babington and instead persuaded Anthony that he was carefully sympathizer and could be trusted. It was Babington misplaced trust and possibly even love for Pauley that was a large contributory factor in his downfall. On July 6, 1586, Babington began writing letters to Mary Stuart, telling her that he and a group of friends were planning to assassinate Elizabeth. Mary replied to Babington, stressing the necessity of foreign aid if the rescue attempt was to succeed. But in the meantime, Babington's growing involvement in the plot was reported to Francis Walsingham by Polly, who was by this time much in Babington's confidence. Babington's letters to Mary were written in cipher, and he explained his plan to rescue her and establish Catholicism in England. What Babington and Mary didn't know, however, was that their letters were being intercepted by Walsingham spies, and one of these was John Florio. 
But how Florio got involved in this spy story? During one of Walsingham's investigations, a suspected subversive named Gilbert Gifford was arrested and interrogated. To avoid punishment, Gifford agreed to act as a double agent. And he made contact with the French Embassy in London. The letters between Mary and her supporters, including Babington, were sent via a beer keg supplied by a brewer. Mary was misled into thinking that these letters were secure, when in reality they were copied and deciphered by John Florio, Walsingham agent. The cipher used in these letters was a nomenclature. This cipher used a small code sheet containing letter, syllable and word substitution tables, sometimes homophonic, that typically convert symbols into numbers. So the process was, Walsingham agents would decode and make a copy of each letter. The letter was then released and given back to Gifford, who would pass it on to the brewer. The brewer would then smuggle the letter to Mary. In short, every message coming to and from Mary's house was intercepted and read by Florio and Walsingham. In one of these letters, Babington outlined a plot to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I and ask Mary's permission to kill her. When she agreed, Walsingham and Florio had they proof. Walsingham arrested Babington and his friends. In the meanwhile, Mary was found guilty and Walsingham made arrangements for her execution. After a moment of hesitation, Elizabeth signs the warrant on February 1st, 1587. Within a week, Mary was beheaded. Her execution was horrendous even by 16th century standards. Babington's final letter to his friend and betrayer, Polly, is one of the most strikingly poignant documents in the case. Farewell, sweet Robin, if as I take thee, true to me, if not, adieu. Omnius pibedum nequissimus of all two footed creatures the vilest. At 24 years old, Babington and his 13 co-conspirators were convicted of high treason. They were hanged, drawn and quartered. Florio's role in the Babington plot was reported by his friend William Vaughan. In his work, published in 1626, one year after Florio's death, the Golden Fleece, William Vaughan wrote an account of the life at court during the reign of Queen Anne of Denmark. He refers to Queen Anne of Denmark and King James using pseudonyms, but when it comes to John Florio, he has no problem giving the real name and a few secret stories about him. Vaughan portrays Florio as a well-known writer of sonnets at court who loved to please his patron with salacious poems, but he also described him as a spy involved in the Marianna plot, which means the plot of Queen Mary Stuart. Vaughan underlined that Florio's promotion at court as close confidant to the Queen and as her private secretary was also thanks to his successful involvement in the Babington plot. I hope that you liked this video on John Florio's secret role as a spy. It certainly reveals that he had a multi-layered personality and it also shows his great ability and talent to have different jobs and activities. Remember what I'm saying right now, he turned chameleon, created the illusion of being everywhere and nowhere. Stay resolute. Bye.